Good evening, everybody. I'm Professor Justin Wittrow. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Forgetco Park Consulting Incorporated outside of New Brunswick, New Jersey. This is our Paramus team's presentation of feasting at Bergen Community College breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I want to welcome our guests from American uh, Dining Creations. This project is directed uh, to them to bring more students and faculty into our dining, new dining experiences here at Bergen Community College. Uh, after the presentation, I'm going to uh, ask everybody to please hold their questions until the end of the program, and, and you can ask the teams whatever you want on their game plans to uh, increase business here on Bergen Community College, and then join us for a reception afterwards. I'd like to introduce the president of the company, President Angelo, and our senior vice president of operations, Olga. Oops, it's off a P now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I'm the divisional president, Angelo. This is our divisional vice president of operations, Olga. Um, welcome to Burke Echo Court. Tonight we're here to present three teams projects uh, for the Burke Cafeteria. Feasting in Style, Breakfast, Lunch, and Dinner at Bergen Community College. Our three team leaders, we have Dimitri from Team 1, Brody from Team 2, Fabio from Team 3. Um, so before we begin with the presentations, as a company, one of the things that we were tasked with doing is finding office space, of course. The next one. So we have found actual office space available right here in Paramus at 15 East Midland Avenue. Um, the up here on the screen, all the pricing that I knew we were tasked with furnishing the office, unfortunately, did not come furnished. Um, and everything is based on a three uh, three months. So the three month lease at just over eighteen thousand uh, dollars. Desk and chairs two thousand. Tables almost we'll seventeen hundred dollars. Of course, shelves, storage, uh, break room, we need break room in an office. That was just under three thousand uh, dollars. iPads would be your source of technology at that point with additional accessories, services, and general office supplies, totaling just over $16,000. Um, once the lease is up, of course, all that furniture needs to get removed. So between the delivery, the assembly, the removal, we're looking at $1,800 in cost. Three month total of all that, about $43,555. Um, now, Olga, just gonna briefly go over all that material in that Spanish for you. Buenas noches a todos, bienvenidos, muchas gracias por atender. Soy el vicepresidente senior de operaciones de Vertical Park Consulting Inc. Mi nombre es Olga Medina y esta noche queremos presentarles nuestra propuesta de festejar con estilo desayuno, almuerzo y cena en el colegio comunitario de Bergen. Vertical Park Consulting Inc. fue fundada en 1999 y nuestra oficina central está ubicada en New Brunswick, Nueva Jersey. Nuestro equipo ejecutivo del satélite Paramus está formado por el director y cofundador Justin Montreux, el presidente de división Angelo Gagliardi y vicepresidente Olga Medina. Y tenemos los tres vicepresidentes de los equipos 1, 2 y 3, Dimitri, Yorley y Fabio. Nuestra oficina de Paramus está ubicada en 15 East Millen Avenue, Paramus, Nueva Jersey. Detrás de mí encontrarán el costo, el costo total por tres meses de $43,555. Este total incluye todos los muebles, suministros y la renta para trabajar. Thank you very much, Olga. So now we're going to begin our presentations. I would like to invite up Team 1. Welcome everyone, Okay, I'm a bit. I just said hi from my native language, Georgian, and I'm really happy to introduce you. My team leader, Kali Basic, Ajipula Sadeki, our um, supervisor of the research team, 
Tiara Moore, she was working on the commercial. Um, Anthony Danardi, head of the research team. Uh, Jasmine uh, Vega. Uh, Vega, sorry. Jasmine Vega, she was working on our slides. Um, Eugenia uh, Wasledge, she was our head of the service and management team. Uh, Armani Nunes, um, he was working on our outlet and pricing. Uh, also, Ralphin Tucci, he was also working on the outlets and the service team. And uh, Ennis Yildiz, he was working, he was the head of our marketing team. Um, so, first and main thing was to achieve objectives. So, we had to plan our objective, objectives, we had to visualize them, we had to write them down. So, the main goal was to enhance knowledge of the student loyalty program. Uh, as it turns out, student loyalty was below 300, so we had to we had to enhance that. Uh, we had to work on that and make it better. Uh, create a dynamic dining hall experience, increase awareness, boost knowledge of locations, and amplify student engagement. Well, okay. And now about the Bulldog Bite identity, Carol Carly, please she will tell us more about the Bulldog Bite identity and how we fix the identity. So. So what exactly is Bulldog Bike Identity is how we see Bulldog Bike. Instead of call, calling it a cafeteria, which seems very bland, not very appealing to go to, we thought of coming up with the name Bulldog Bike, something catchy, something to grab your attention. We wanted to create a more prime and diverse place for students to connect with their fellow peers and ultimately have it as a casual setting for them to hang out in something to bring your friends to. Um, it is located here in the Pickens Center in C210, and we want the environment to ultimately leverage technology. We want to get rid of the good old fashioned paper like menus, you know, incorporating sorts of technology, something up to date where it's very user friendly and more, more efficient, so to speak. But why would you want to go to Bulldog Bites? So, as we all know, college students, they're not millionaires, we're, we're broke kids. So discovering the student loyalty program, it's gonna give you ways to actually save money, ways you can actually have deals, ways you can accumulate points. Um, as well as you want a place, not only just in the library, maybe somewhere you would also want to go hang out with, more entertaining, uh, more lively, um, you would want to go to Bulldog Bites. Um, you can also experience some lively events, you know, such as like a movie night or something that the school will provide. As well as it can be an accelerated solution um, to eat between classes. As you know, back-to-back -back classes, it's hard with long lines to, you know, get that meal and it's important to eat, especially when you want to do well in your classes. So having a good alternative and a good way, fast way to eat will be also a reason why to go see. Oof. I've heard the temperature of the classroom here in the front is different from what it is in the back, but it feels so real. Anyway, I'm glad I have my teammates here with me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Najibullah Sadiqi, and I'm a member of Team One. I would like to first thank you, the Vice President of our team, Mr. Dimitri Radishvili, and our team leader, Ms. Carly and that worked really hard on the project to complete this. With the Bulldog Fight identity and the achieving objective being said, the first thing we did to start working on this project was researching and collecting data about our target group, which is the college staff and the students at Bergen Community College. The first thing I did as a member of the data research and analysis was going to the library and look for the student's diversity. By the help of the librarian David, which is really nice guy, I appreciate his help, I was able to get everything, almost everything about the student's demographic uh, from the fact book that was provided by David. The only unfortunate about it was the data is from fall 2020. Since the Bergen Community College fact book is updated like every two years, that was the last update we could get. I also looked some oversight uh, online and came up with the same results. 
and um, actually the thinking over them and then comparing them with the data from 2016 from 2020 I have came up with the information that you can see here on the board that the Y ethnicity is 37.2 percent and then the Asian ethnicity is 11 percent and Hispanic is 31.2 percent and so on so working on this information and going on it with more details we came up with different types of food from different nations that we included them in five different menus including desserts drinks and lunch and breakfast menus that my teammates are going to be explaining in more detail thank you very much <coughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Regina Waslas. I am a team leader for our service management. And together with my wonderful team, Armani and Rafi, we created uh, five outlets for our uh, new cafeteria. And based on the demography of the uh, students, and also after uh, taking a, a survey, we created a very healthy, affordable, and uh, like a very close to student uh, menu. So I'm gonna present uh, two of the front outlets, which is uh, daytime, daylight. And the second one is uh, fill up. And uh, I'm gonna present the first one in my native language, which is Polish. So, this is Panowitku, daytime, daylight, which is in Polish, I'm speaking in Polish, but all the translation you can find in the health handout menu. So, zapraszamy, aby skorzystać z domowych śniadań oraz obiadów. Kafeteria będzie otwarta do użytku od godziny 8 do 11 podczas śniadania oraz podczas obiadu od 12 do 3. Next slide, please. The second outlet, which we are proud of, it, is Fill Up. Many of us or eager students, actually all of us are eager students, and many of us are working hard. So we don't have time to prepare very healthy menus, very healthy meals. In this station, in this outlet, we're gonna be able to enjoy vibrant and refreshing food, which are made from the fresh fruits and vegetables, and they are combined in smoothies and shakes. The fruits and vegetables are very healthy for you. And of course, after being working out, studying, we don't have time to eat healthy. So buying stuff, buying smoothies and shakes from this outlet, you will get your health back, energy and power. And remember, in healthy body, healthy mind. Thank you. Now, my friend, my colleague Armani will present the second outlet. Right, so <clears throat> I'll be introducing to you our second outlet, which will be the grilled core. Uh, we have something like this in the cafeteria right now. However, we wanted to add something more modernized and something that will add add more snacks or some uh, diversity to the grill. So we decided to change it up a little bit. And this is we, we came up with, where it's gonna be called grilled core and it's gonna have a diversity selection of grilled favorites. Uh, including juicy burgers, succulent chickens, and other mouth-watering seafoods. Then we have our third outlet. Am I correct? Third? Yes. All right. And it's going to be something that works with, like we talked about. We have a lot of diversity in the campus, and thir like we saw, thirty about thirty-three percent of diversity in campus is going to be like his Hispanic. Uh, origin, so we decided to 
add something in that would compensate to that, which is El, uh, El Toro outlets. Uh, this is going to be a vibrant and authentic outlet that honors the both flavors and culinary heritage of our Hispanic cuisine. This is going to, like I mentioned, be for Hispanic people so that they have something, or some people like change it up as well, which is what we had this option. Now I'm going to be passing it on to our my colleague, which would be talking about our fifth and last outlet. Good evening, everyone. My name is Justin Lopez. I'm going to present the last outlet that we've been working on. But first of all, let me ask you a quick question. Have you ever wanted something spicy or, or sweet, or perhaps something salty or strawberry? But well, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I have the answer, and the answer is named Bamboo House. Bamboo House many features in handling a variety of dishes of different countries from Asia, including China, Japan, Korea, Thailand, and many more. Whatever you're in the mood for something, as I said in the beginning, spicy or baby sweet, or maybe something savory tangy, Bamboo House has a dish for sure that's gonna hit the spot for you. Experience the flavor of Asia. Come at Bamboo House. Okay, moving forward, uh, we already figured out that we have a QR code uh, for student loyalty and uh, kind of working the QR code and made a few slight changes. Uh, nothing really special, but nothing goes without technology nowadays. So I'd like to introduce Anthony to tell us more about QR codes and uh, more about our further ideas that we worked on and we're gonna present it to you. Anthony, please. So using a QR code and implementing it into an app is something that everyone's used to. Everyone sees it all the time. You scan the QR code, it brings you up to the app store, whether it be on uh, Apple or Android. Now with that being said, it's an extremely cost-effective and efficient way of, use, of utilizing a marketing technique to outreach the entire school. This is something that can be posted on every single door and have a giant banner right in front of the school for pennies compared to what other types of marketing can uh, cost. Now with that being said, the QR code can also be used for ordering food. Now the reason why the QR code would be extremely effective for ordering food is because this app can also target the amount of students that will be ordering food and simultaneously track their information so they're able to essentially how do I explain it? Develop a cafe allowance. So this would go through the USDA, for the US Department of Agriculture. The US Department of Agriculture can offer subsidized, non-liquidatable funds to students that are in need. This QR code could track how many students may need financial assistance for uh, a sustenance allowance. This sustenance allowance would be able to be tracked through the app and every single student would be able to get a at least a very minimal amount of uh, cafe allowance all the way up to 100%. So if the student is here full time, they could be awarded anywhere from $1,000 to $1,800 per semester for food. This would help mitigate a lot of students who, you know, have the financial need, while simultaneously targeting, uh, you know, state funding. The state funding will essentially measure each student's need, and I'll go from there. As for the app itself. This is a, a baseline design and development. Now, the design and development goes from will basically give students the opportunity to pre-order their food if they're in a rush, or see what's on the menu for that day. This will open up, you know, uh, a student who's either in a rush or doesn't know what the menu is, instead of ignoring it and going home and ordering food or ordering Uber Eats or whatever it may be. They can check the app, if it's something that they enjoy, then it's something that they can, they can use throughout their time at Bergen. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we start now? I'm sorry. <clears throat> One more time. I'm sorry, I won't. No, you're good. 
Would you introduce yourself? I'm Matt C. I'm a recording tech major. I'm getting into voice acting. I'm happy to be here. My name is Anta, and uh, I'm a psychology major, and I'm hoping to become a, a research psychologist. My name is Botan Khan. I'm a journalism major. Uh, my name is Elijah Phillips. I'm a distinguished gentleman on Phi Sound and the Jewish Society of What improvements would you like to see in the cafeteria? Um, I would just like to see them like more kids of food to vegetarians. I think they do have options, but just not a like a wide variety of options. I would love there to be food that feels more authentic and less greasy. I think sometimes I don't want to eat like a burger if it's something too heavy while I'm in class. So I think different, healthier options. I want it to look less like a cafeteria. It looks like a high school right now. Very unappealing. That's at least one thing. Uh, I would definitely like some color, some vibrancy to the cafeteria. I feel like it would make it pop. It would probably raise a lot of positivity and a lot of people's mental. If there was an app you could use to order food from cafeteria, how would you feel about it? I have actually thought about it just today because I have classes back to back and waiting in line is not going to be enough for me. It's always like a hassle trying to wait for the food that's about to come up and you're still like, it's a waste of time. Um, I think an app will make the time to get food a little faster, because once you order it, you can just pick it up and go. A lot of people go to Garden State Plaza or another mall to get food, so having it right here would be really good for everybody. I could order ahead, yeah. find it ready, probably even pay on the app. Uh, that would be actually perfect. If they had an app, I think it would be far easier seeing that the cafeteria does close at like 2.30. There's like mad people going downstairs at once, so I think it would be great if they had an app. Thank you very much, AJ. That was amazing. My name is Ennis, my last name is Yildiz, and we'll be presenting to you in my own language um, our social media platforms and campaigns. Hepinizin bildiği gibi, e, hepinizin de yaptığı gibi, bizde de aynı şekilde Instagram, Facebook, Twitter veya TikTok veya Snapchat üzerinden bu kampanyamızı yaymayı düşünüyoruz. Ee, bu kampanyamızı yaymak için çeşitli videolar, çeşitli fotoğraflar, çeşitli menüler vesaire yayınlamayı düşünüyoruz. Ee, bunun yanı sıra yani çok eğlenceli e, bir platform oluşturduğumuz için yani genellikle öğrencilere hitap eden bir platform oluşturduğumuz için zaten ileriki slaytlarda da göreceksiniz anlatacağım tekrardan. Ee, bunun çok işe yarayacağını düşünüyoruz. Ee, onun dışında gerçekten her bizimsin ihtiyacı olduğunu düşünüyorum. Teşekkür ederim. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Sierra, and I will be following up with that. Um, one way that we wanted to increase more activity in the cafeteria was to actually set up a student loyalty booth. Um, this would be a booth on select days, like throughout the semester, for example, the first day of school. Um, this is where students can actually come to the booth and ask questions about our rewards program and they can actually sign up for it there. If they do sign up for it there, that's when they will be able to receive um, a welcome discount specialized for them. Um, upon following our Facebook and Instagram page, you will be able to see um, exclusive dining discounts that will be held like throughout the week only through certain times. So if you follow those pages, you will be able to see that. 
Um, there will also be a specialized email sent out to every single student with a little bit of information about both on bikes, um, a link to our app store, and then a link to our socials. Um, and here are some flyers that might be posted throughout the school or on those social media accounts. Um, this one has a QR code, um, and this one has um, pictures of the new menus and menu items. I think that it's really important for people to see what they're actually going to be eating because it will just increase them to want to get it even more. Hi, I'm Jasmine Vega, and I'm part of the marketing and graphic design team. So an idea we had for a marketing initiative is a movie night. You can set up a concession stand and a projector. You can also have snacks and drinks that you can also order on the app. But we think it's a great idea to bring in students just to have time, you know, just like clubs and other sports that can come to join the cafeteria. Now I'm gonna pass it on to Carly to explain more of the initiative. So going more over what Sarah mentioned earlier about the student loyalty booth, um, the main goal really with the student loyalty booth is to have engagement with the students um, to clear up any sort of confusion because how often do we get confused about something and then we just forget about it, we just don't really think much of it. So with being able to provide clarity to the students and be able to engage with them, it can give them a better understanding about the loyalty program. Um, this would be staffed by one of the experts on the program to be able to ask any questions, um, as well as having incentives for same-day sign-ups, such as like a little goodie bag and the generous discount box. Once more, um, these are implementing, uh, like these are actually entertainment systems I'll be explaining in Turkish again. Um, i̇lk başta görüyoruz ki e, eğlence sistemlerimiz var. PlayStation, e, futbol yani langır, e, air hockey ya da işte e, masa tenisi gibi e, eğlence yani öğrenci çekecek daha çok e, sistemlerimiz olacak. Bu PlayStation için e, kendi ülkemizden yani Türkiye Türkiye'den örnek aldım. Genellikle PlayStation kafeler oluyor. E, yalnız okullarda da adapte olsa, hani yani ikinci kata niye öğrenciler çıkar? E, bir eğlence olsa çıkar sanki. Yani bunun dışında çok yemeği çıkaracağını düşünmüyorum. E, onun yanı sıra. Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max gibi şeyler de televizyonla yayınlanabilecek. Bunun yanı sıra da işte müzik vesaire hani antika olan müzik kutusu da sergilenecek. İsteyen istediği müziği çalabilecek. Çok teşekkür ederim. Thank you so much. So moving forward we had to come up with a budget and we had to had to somehow optimize it. So um, an overall pricing will be app page development and development plan will cost like six thousand uh, dollars. Software development itself it's forty five thousand to seventy thousand um, dollars, depending on the you know the software itself. Uh, student loyalty boost will be six hundred and thirty seven dollars and forty eight cents. Entertainment systems all together, including football, hockey table, and playstations. Uh, will be $5,039.99 uh, $5, and movie night with the whole setup, uh, seats and everything, audio system, uh, including projector that we also included, will be a total of uh, $4,033.94. And the total pricing altogether will be $60,711 uh, up to $85,711. So, thank you very much, once again, everyone for coming. Thank you, I wanna thank my team for this work and effort that we put in all of this. Um, and if you have any questions, like do not hesitate to ask us about anything, any questions, if anything, any information was unclear, you can definitely ask us.
Anthony, do you want to answer the question about the app? Um, just something that I missed uh, during pitch time. Uh, because the app will be targeting, uh, the, ma the main target's gonna be helping students uh, that can't afford food, help them get food. Now this is, this is something that can be uh, that can be shown on tax returns to help provide assistance for the total cost of the app. If let's say 40% of this app is uh, designated to helping students with financial need, 40% of that app can be written off, which would also help mitigate a lot of the, uh, the, the, the marginal costs that come with developing an app. Um, I had the initial thought of using uh, uh, developing an app uh, actually uh, right after uh, we kind of gathered uh, the team together to figure everything out. Uh, I'm currently working on the development of an app right now, which is going to be costing anywhere in the area of about uh, very low six figures. So because of that, I thought, why don't we try and uh, implement some type of app for Burden Community as a Kickstarter for them to be able to add in, uh, what's the, uh, the Moodle? So you have Moodle. This this isn't just a this isn't just a you know end all be all cafeteria. That's it. It's a kickstart for the entire school to be multi platform on both online, uh, app wise as well as um, through web browser programs. Uh, so right after that, I kind of you know stepped back a little bit, and then everyone we all uh, we all got together, and um, everyone's uh, ingenuity and uh, imagination kind of sparked together and uh, created a plan of what could, uh, could potentially be the uh, Bergen app. Who came up with Forking Buddies? Oh, it was like a collaborative. We were all brainstorming about the name and we wanted to include the Bergen mascot and also like something more. Uh, we wanted to get rid of the name of uh, Cafeteria itself because it automatically associates with something, you know, like a high school spot that we already uh, heard from the commercial as well. So, and that's how, you know, we brainstormed, doing the brainstorming and all, from all of the names we came, you know, finally stick with the pool of bites. Any questions? So, this is what I'm thinking. In a, in a previous location, I had an ordering system like this. How do you control the ordering system that my people aren't inundated. So I don't know what the complete population is of the school. Let's say there's 5,000 kids here. If 300 kids all order at once, my people won't be able to keep up with it. So what's your plan to keep the orders from just rushing into the system and basically just overloading the system? Is there some type of parameter you can set up? Is there is there something that we can do where the orders can be spaced or? Definitely. We're just like uh, suggesting the idea of the app, but further like uh, moving forward, you can always like you will have this was only the user interface that we actually showed it to you uh, that we designed. Uh, but also like uh, back end side, the side that you will see from the cafeteria, uh, you will have the whole control over it. So you can always control the flow, you know, amount of orders that you can take. Uh, one of the outlets can go, you know, busy or like offline. Like you can always change that. That's why the software costs from forty-five thousand to seventy thousand because you can always change it and you can always manage uh, the flow of uh, the customers that are coming inside. And, uh, we included that. We included that part also, like uh, while thinking about the back end uh, of the whole software. So you will have this access and control over everything. And then the, can you give me a little bit more information on that? You were talking about the USDA and the Food Financial Assistance Program. That's something that you've, I mean, you've completely, yes, it's I'm a, not familiar with this, I'm just trying to. So uh, it's it's offered, uh, ex like not exclusively, but uh, uh, a lot more often in um, California. Now, obviously the USDA is federal and nationwide, so if, so long as that the uh, the code doesn't um, overlap with any restrictions in New Jersey, everything should be good to go on that. It may take it may take six months to a year of the app actually being fully functional, just to get enough um, data to send into the state to apply for the proper funding. Because this is uh, it, between the five thousand students, this could be anywhere between like five hundred thousand and a few million dollars per year in uh, substance allowance. 
So because of that, it may require a little bit of uh, data harvesting and mining, but it's not anything that would be, would be out of the realm of possibility. Because this is something that is mainly, that this is what the app is gonna be able to target because it's gonna be able to track orders explicitly through each student. Each student has different financial needs, and based on that, they can come up. The, the state can come up with uh, a proper funding amount per each student, per each semester. Okay. Any more questions? Anything other than that? Okay. Thank you very much. the introduction, introduction in my own language uh, as a traditional way. Değerli öğrenciler, değerli misafirlerimiz, e, bugün gelip bizi onurlandırdığınız için, onurlandırdığınız için çok teşekkür ederiz. Öncelikle bu size bu fırsatı verdiği için Profesör e, James Bey'e, ardından e, bize yardımcı olduğu için Gökhan abiye, ardından e, emeği geçen Angelo Bey ve emeği geçen Olga Hanım'a çok çok teşekkür ediyorum. Onun haricinde bu gece bize gelip yalnız bırakmayan ayrı üyelerimiz, ayrıca buraya kadar gelip giyinen ve hazırlanan sınıf arkadaşlarım, ayrıca bugün için büyük emek döken takım arkadaşlarım için, takım arkadaşlarıma ben teşekkür ediyorum ve size takım üyemiz ve takım liderimiz olan Yorli Hanım'a bırakıyorum. Good evening. Welcome to our presentation of the project testing at Bergen Community College breakfast, lunch and dinner. My name is Jolie Zambrano and I am the Vice President of Leader Team Victoria Vasquez and our team is going to be conferred for Chamin, Jocelyn, Lee, Ali, Chugai, and Anthony. In continuation, the team member will be presenting the social media campaign, campaign with a commercial video, Instagram page, and marketing idea. A continuación, los miembros del equipo estarán presentando la campaña de redes sociales, video comercial, la página de Instagram y la idea de mercado. So, for our social media campaign, we, um, we started with Instagram. Um, our commercial is on there. Um, the name of our, uh, of what we changed the past year's name to, Bulldog Hut, is on there. The logo we made is on there. Um, some photos we took at the at the Bulldog Hut itself um, shows us uh, what type of food and uh, drinks they have there. And uh, yeah, uh, this is our commercial video. We also have it on Instagram QR code if you want to scan it with your phone. something is missing in our cafeteria and in our uh, dining center. That's why we are doing this presentation, right? 
So uh, the main thing we we uh, install in the cafeteria is the thing about the marketing, right? So even though you have the best food in the world, if people doesn't know it, how can you market? How can you uh, sell it to people, right? So the main thing, the main problem is the lack of attraction. So how do we lack of? Uh, how do we solve that problem? So the thing about the school itself, uh, I think my all of my friends will agree with me. The, this school is a little boring. So <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, but this school is a little boring. So everyone is trying to escape from the school as soon as possible when they finish their classes. To be honest, I myself don't, don't even like went to cafeteria before this presentation because I don't need to stay in the school to have some time. So to strengthen uh, our school bonds and our uh, to be able to spend some time with our friends, we should add some something to school, right? So as as we all thought that I think and we think uh, build a gaming center, it, it will be a really easy and a cheap one. We could just add, add up a place to have some table games, maybe some video games, some music, something like a little corner that, that, can, you can, uh, that includes the games you can find in every uh, gaming center. Then of course we also, want, we also saw the lack of uh, awareness of the, our dining center and even though, like I said, we do the best marketing, if people don't know we are doing that, it doesn't matter. So we should put QR codes in uh, all around the school, uh, starting from the student center and the tables in the student center, so people can know what we are selling in the dining store, the dining uh, room, what we are doing there, and how can uh, they will know how we are able to provide what we are able to provide. Of course, we have uh, some special events which will, my colleagues will present uh, later on uh, to present uh, and promote our cafeteria. Also, we, sh we can use our school's email uh, system to let uh, our friends and our professors about our events and about our name gaming, gaming center. Uh, and also, we can, tr we, all, we all know that a social media campaign is important for every business, so we can uh, strengthen our social media campaign by using some influencers for uh, our dining cafeteria. Thank you. So yeah, we, we made a survey. Um, we surveyed about 50 people and what um, people liked the most was music and video games out of the four because we see here two video games and table games. And they also um, thought that that was the best time for a schedule for people to come and eat at, at our Poldo Hut. As you can see, we can just include the easiest, uh, easiest uh, game, games and uh, tables to our game center. I want to continue in my own language uh, for the next part. Bildiğiniz üzere ülkem, ülkemizde diyecektim evet. Bildiğiniz üzere okulumuzda birçok Türk var ve ayrıca e, okulumuzda kafeteryamızda gördüğünüz üzere ayrıca internasyonel bir yemek menümüz de var. İnternasyonel yemek menümüze bakarken neden Türk döneri olmadığını ben şahsen yani baktığımda şaşırdım. Sizin Türk olduğunuzda fark etmeme rağmen hani bak, baktım ve dedim ki neden Türk döneri yok? Okulumuzda sizin de bahsettiğiniz üzere ayrıca Türk şeflerimiz olduğunuzdan da bahsettiniz. Ayrıca Türk öğrencilerin de çok olduğunu biz biliyoruz. Zaten sırf bu sınıfta iki tane Türk öğrencimiz var. Ee, ve Türk döneri hem de öğrenci için benim Türkiye'de en ucuz bulabildiğim yemek olduğu için Türk döneri biz tavsiye ediyorduk ve kendimiz e, Türk döneri tüketiyorduk. Şimdi ayrıca Türk dönerinin şöyle bir özelliği var. Kendisi yani turistik olarak Türkiye'de ilk Türk yemeği dediğiniz zaman bir gelen akla kebap, iki gelen de akla döner. Neden bu yemeğimizden hem ucuz olmasından, hem kolay olmasından, hem de şahsen benim bayıldığım ve eminim ki tüm e, kültürlere hitap edebilecek bir yemek olduğunu bildiğim Türk dönerini kendi kafeteryamızda, kendi e, Türk şeflerimizde sunamayalım. İnternasyonel e, yemek menümüzün bence başlayıcı olabilir diye düşünüyorum. Ayrıca yapmasının çok zor olmadığını ve 
Herkesin de ucuz ve tüketilebilir bir yemek olacağını düşünüyorum. Thank you. So I'm thinking is what does attract students come back to the cafeteria more often? And the students need a coffee. That is what I think. And a lot of coffee, free coffee. So that's what we come out, come out with the idea of what called the students coffee club. So when you join that the student when the when the students apply the club and uh, we will give them this uh, thermal cup and have our, our have the logo about this uh, restaurants and have a QR code. So it will be included the membership and a lot of promotion we will socially set a QR code. So let's just bring a sample and the when the students have that the thermal cup, then they can use the thermal cup, go to the cafeteria, get the free coffee and the whole month. And the next month, they will pay $9.99 per month for the membership and enjoy that unlimited coffee or the soft dessert. So, you know, so I believe the most people when they go to get the coffee, of course, sometimes they will check some snacks and attract their attention, maybe just grab one bar or chips. And also this will increase the, uh, the business sales in the restaurant. Okay, so when the students are in the coffee club, and also automatically enrolled to the reward program. The reward program I will introduce later. So once you are in the, once that students are in that the coffee club, and they will enjoy a lot of the weekly promotion discounts. And uh, not only include the meals, drinks, and snacks, also some merchandise. And uh, we are thinking about if this, is the, this uh, cafeteria maybe can bring some like a, Cups, t-shirts, and uh, all the something related about the Brazilian uh, 
our college. And because all the students are loyalty customer to the cafeteria, so we have to give them some special treatment. So they will come out the birthday treat, or some like a graduation treat, or some special let them to feel they want to join that club. Okay. So in this school, not only have students, we have a um, professors and all the staff, uh, all the staff, the workers in the school. So they are our customers as well. So we have to let them to know the cafeteria and uh, to become some another way to bring the more business to the cafeteria. So for the for the professor, and we give them another spe special thing is called the professional promotion code, and it will print it on that page chain. And uh, of course, they will get the free cup and get the unlimited coffee. And they also use that the PVC code can get the five percent discounts. The major thing is, I think, they can ask their students. Say that if you use, if they, the students use that as a PVC code, and the students can get five percent off, and also the professor can get a reward point, uh, uh, reward points. So the reward points have a lot of the benefits. I will introduce them later. So just think about it, when the professor go to the school, go to the classroom, hold the cup and show the logo there, and then say, the, okay, put it there. It's just like a free advertisement there. Okay. Okay. So the next uh, will be the reward program and the link uh, associated with the, the student lorry club, uh, uh, student coffee, uh, coffee club, and the professional coffee club. So because when they spend, they will accumulate the reward points. It's kind of similar when you use a credit card. So when you spend, and then you will get the points. When you buy the meal, drink, anything purchased in the cafeteria, you will get the points. The points you can use a lot of the things. You can to, to, to read them for your meal, to get a drink. And uh, the major one thing is you can pay for to pay for your membership. I just mentioned that uh, previously it said, okay, maybe one, a nine dollar ninety nine cents the membership membership fee. So if they spend more, they get more points. The points can to exchange to use for the membership. Then that will be total free coffee for the students. Then they will come more often. Okay, and also the points for the for the student or professor and they never expire until they close the account. Uh, uh, like uh, get out of this the program, uh, get out of the club, uh, student or professional club. And uh, I want to emphasize about unlimited reward points can be transferred. This is the one thing as we can attract new customer. It's like some new students come in the school, but they don't know anything about the promotion, the, the restaurant. And then the, some people is a loyalty customer, and they said, okay, I have a point, I can treat you free, I can transfer. And then they will use that to the full, the point to buy one meal. And then they kind of should start to like it. And also when the students graduate from the school, they has some points, how they do it. They can give to another friends or some new students. Also, I forgot to mention one thing is, uh, when the professor, let the students to scan their uh, the professor promotion code. Also, the students can choose which professor the PPC code that they can scan. It's kind of like I use that in my prof uh, my favorite professor's code, and I use it, and the professor also can get the points. And also, you kind of help your professor get a free drink and a free meal. Okay, so that is what I try to present. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ali Sila, and I'm gonna be talking about the food menus. Uh, as you see here, we have four main uh, cuisines, and these cuisines were not made by us. We had, uh, we've handed out uh, some survey asking students, 
what types of cuisine that we want to see in our cafeteria and in our pizzeria. And according to that survey, most of our students are fans of Latin food, Italian, Asian, and halal food. Yeah. And even though even though uh, all of them they, they love these kind of cuisines, we didn't just create the menu out of it. We ask ourselves three questions. First of all, if we're gonna have to bring with the food, we make sure that the cafeteria workers are gonna do uh, make that food easily. And also, we want it to be cheap because students are uh, generally broke, so we're gonna have to consider that one. And in addition to that, we want some food that's gonna be quickly eaten because we don't want a steak and have a fork, you know, you just have like 15 minutes, I don't know what. So because of that, we came up with these uh, menus. The first thing, uh, this is a dessert that we have made. Uh, actually, you can make your own dessert clips and the steps are right here. First thing first, you're gonna have to choose your, your own toppings. You can see the bananas and uh, you have uh, Nutella's, strawberry, blueberry, and also mayonnaise. We, yes. After that, we have a food clip. Now the food clip is part of our Latin menus, and we came up with three uh, menus for that one. The pizza clip, which is included with tomato sauce, garlic, onion, basil, etc. as you can see. In addition to that, we have chicken teriyaki clip. Uh, that chicken, uh, spinach, carrots, and sesame, as you can see. After that, we have fajita cream, which is chicken, bell pepper, onion, lime juice. Yes. We also have another dessert. Uh, so to, uh, in that one also, you can choose your own base, and also choose your own topping and everything. So we have those two desserts available for students in our lighting section. Uh, we also have uh, baked empanadas. So there are different uh, baked empanadas. First of all, you have chicken empanadas, which is 250 cents. You have beef, beef empanadas, $3, and ham and cheese empanadas, 250. We also have cheese empanadas, 250. And everyone can afford this, honestly. After that, we can move to our Asian style. Uh, the first thing that we have is freshly seasoned chicken pork, and it's just for $8. I hope our uh, students can afford that. In addition to that, we have chicken broccoli, uh, which is also $8, and Chinese chicken wings, just for $6. Yeah, and in addition to that, we also have sushi available, uh, California roll, the classic roll, it just for six seven seventy five cents. And we have chicken roll, also six seventy five cents, and crab Philadelphia roll, also six, for, for six seventy five cents. And in addition to those, we also have vegetable roll. Uh, uh, vegetable roll are also 6.75 cents. And the caterpillars, which are uh, this classical uh, caterpillar roll for 7.75 cents. And vegetable tempura, which are uh, also 7.75 cents. So we try to keep uh, the price really reasonable so that every student can enjoy uh, these uh, delicious foods. Now, this is my favorite one, <coughs> the halal food. And for the halal food, we came up with uh, beef gyro platter, which uh, beef gyro platter, palato platter, and chicken gyro platter. And all of those plates are served with rice, one rice and red sauce. And the prices are only $10, which is really reasonable. <coughs> Then after that, we have a beef gyro sandwich, uh, which are served with pita, lettuce, tomato, and choice of toppings only for $8. And in addition to <coughs> beef gyro, we also have chicken gyro, because we're not gonna give you only beef as an option. Uh, that's also for $8. And baklava dessert, which are layer of pastry dessert made of pillow pastry, and it's two for $5. So uh, I would like to give the space to my uh, colleague. He's gonna present to you about the Italian menus. Okay, so me and Ali, we both came up with the Italian dishes. Um, so we came up with uh, easy, easy, cheap dishes to make that you can make in batch. Um, so it's easier for the chefs and uh, it's easier to 
get out quick with the customers. Um, Penny Vodka, um, for $15, you, you could say it's even a little bit cheaper in some places. Um, just tomato sauce and vodka infused. Um, if you have the chicken parmesan, you can't go wrong with the chicken parmesan sandwich. Um, for $12, uh, we have the chicken piccata, um, boneless uh, tender white chicken breast, sauteed in white uh, in wine, basil, fresh mushrooms, and uh, capers, $14. And then we have a uh, last Italian meal, uh, meat lasagna, uh, classic Italian American lasagna with ground beef, rags, cottage cheese, and mozzarella for $14. So the pizzeria downstairs already has a pretty decent menu, and I mean, they specialize in pizza. You can't really do too, too much of pizza, but I figured we could add some Sicilian style pizza just because it's made on the thicker crust. Um, it's also made with a thicker dough, and it's cut into a square, which is typically bigger than a triangle. Um, it would just be a little bit more filling. It would be $5 per slice. And again, it's just something simple and easy for students that are on the go and need something quick and don't have time to maybe stop for an actual entree as mentioned in the previous menus. Um, downstairs, they also already have chicken tenders and fries, um, but you know, you can't go wrong with chicken tenders and fries. It's a fan favorite. And again, the pizzeria, we're primarily focusing on something quick and easy for students, especially those who can't come either upstairs or don't have the time to make the stop to buy or wait in line for um, any of the entrees that we offer in the cafeteria. Um, we also decided to add some grilled chicken wraps just for some people that are maybe trying to be a little bit more health conscious. Uh, grilled chicken wraps, you can never go wrong. You can choose between whole or um, whole wheat or white wraps and it would come with grilled chicken, avocado, um, spinach, sliced tomatoes, and your choice of oil and vinegar or balsamic vinaigrette. And obviously this is up to the customer, so AKA students or faculty, you know, whether or not they want to incorporate every single ingredient, you can customize it to however you'd like. Um, and this would be for $10. I'd like to introduce our wonderful, <laughs> um, our wonderful Shanmin to, uh, bring about or talk about our Fun Fest, which is again a campaign to get students more involved in our um, cafeteria and get them to you know, be more involved with just other students on campus making new friends, because I personally struggle making friends. So I feel like Fun Fest is just a good idea for students to interact with one another. Um, the first place uh, would 
be um, MacBook Pro the second for the solo. Uh, MacBook Pro the second, and iPhone 14, and the third and third one. And for the groups, uh, the first base will get uh, five thousand dollars. The second place will get uh, three thousand dollars cash, and the third base will, will have the whole uh, whole semester. Uh, free on the loyalty program. Okay, um, también vamos a tener rifas durante uh, los medios tiempos o descansos que vamos a tener en los Battle Dance, uh, donde uh, el estado de descanso se va a aprovechar para dejarles saber a, los, a las personas que estarán presentes um, ofertas y especiales que vamos a tener. Cada vez que una persona gaste 10 dólares ese día, um, va a estar participando en rifas donde vamos a tener 5 premios. El primero será un AirPod Pro, el segundo será 30, un cupón de 30 dólares, de 300 dólares para la librería. Um, el tercero será ser miembro gratuito, uh, eh, miembro del, del Logistic Program por el semestre de otoño. Eh, el cuarto un kit de gorra termo y sudadera de BCC y el tercero 200 dólares en el uh, Also, we are gonna have uh, photo booths with props alluding to BCC. Um, to be able to get into the uh, photo booth, you have to show to a uh, cafeteria or pizzeria receipt to up to 10 dollars. Uh, to the staff. They will save the order numbers so people cannot use the same um, receipt more than once. Um, también vamos a tener videojuegos eh, donde vamos a poner televisores, uh, juegos um, uh, y para jugar solamente tienen que presentar el, un recibo de una compra de más de 10 dólares también al personal y solo puedes utilizar este recibo cinco veces. Uh, también vamos a estar uh, dando eh, especiales y ofertas durante el día para que todos puedan seguir disfrutando. Eh, estas ofertas incluyen combos, descuentos y más. Um, here's the budget for the battle dance. Uh, for Samsung DJ, you can spend uh, $1,500. For lights, $800. Stage decor, uh, $1,010. Uh, and for the prices, uh, $12,500. $12, uh, for the video games, we're gonna, we're gonna spend uh, $4,085. And for the photo booths, uh, $1,800. Also, we made a flyer uh, uh, for to promote the the event uh, to print a hundred thousand uh, thousand uh, flyers we're gonna spend seventeen dollars and we also create uh, a shirt for the staff who is gonna be working with us uh, on the event. Uh, we're gonna have 30 uh, people working on it and the price the budget for it is three three hundred and eighty dollars. going to present to you the general budget and the sources. The general budget, um, a continuación se le presentará el presupuesto de general, general con las fuentes de información reales. El budget for social media, the page on Instagram is totally free. But you are, you are going to find information about the cost for advertising on Instagram. The cost per click of a CPC is in the food industry is $0.64. The cost per 1,000 views a CPM is average of 6.68. The logo, the logo budget, and the logo copyright fee has a cost of $500. And you can see the sources where you can research if the logo is original 
and how much is going to be the price. We have the idea for the QR code logo pedestal with the price of 8.50 earphones. For the quantity of 15, you're going to have a total of 425. This style with a bright color is excellent for the students and teachers. Like, they are going to hold the attention. <coughs> we have a gaming center for the price of 570, a good material, muscle game table, and a basketball, basketball game with the price of $2,096. You will see in the battle our sources. The marketing budget uh, of the email is totally free, something that you need to use and you can use in the Bergen Community College. The best idea for the marketing uh, email is to meet a promotion and discount every week. Um, influencers campaign. That idea, I really, I really like this idea. The style that we, we were thinking of uh, influence is, uh, is looking for somebody here at the Bergen Community College. They have so many followers. They have a lot of followers and it's here in New, in New Jersey. The price for an uh, influence, that is a micro influencer, is from, is, is, um, sorry, is from 10,000, with 10,000 to 15,000 followers, has a cost for 100 to 500 dollars. A mid-tier influencer that has a, they have 115,000 to 500,000 followers who could you charge anywhere to 500 to 5,000 dollars. The cost for this budget is going to be 3,000 dollars. The banners. The banner with our logo design um, is a great idea to put, to, to add it or put it in the hallway, in the hallway. We can see our logos and the food in the banners. In the bottom, you can see the sources. Um, if you want to research this information, you can look for the sources. We have the program budget, the loyalty program budget. We have a price for each key chain for $24.82. For a total of 200 pieces, we have a total amount of $2,064. We have a budget for the fuel travel mode. We pick the first one, it's cheaper, for 500, for, five, una, for a quantity of 500 pieces, you are going to pay 4,860. Then, since our survey and data that we recollect from the students, we know the Halal School is the, um, has the highest rating. And that's the reason because I see a, a, a detailed budget of the beef gyro sandwich, where my resources were restaurant depot farmers market in this case. The total price to produce for this place was 175. Sell price is $8, and you are going to have a profit of $6.25. That one, uh, el precio total por el plato, que es el sandwich giro, sandwich giro de ternera, is going to be $1.75. El precio de venta, also, y tu ganancia va a ser de $6.25. The chicken platter. My sources were farmer market, uh, Route 46 farmer market, restaurant depot, and Walmart. Total price of the product of the product of pay is two dollars twenty five. Sales price ten dollars. Profits for seven point ninety five. Precio total por el plato dos punto cero cinco. Precio de venta is going to be ten dollars. Su ganancia va a ser de siete con noventa cinco por este plato. Total budget, we have a total budget of $39,014. And thank you so much for your attention. Before we close out, I'm so sorry, did you guys have any questions for us, Professor? Yeah. Do you have any questions?
point of view. I like the idea of the bunk press. I thought you did a very nice, very detailed job on that. And I liked all the ideas for the pizza. We I think you expanded on it. I love the logo. I think you did a beautiful job handwriting. I thought the cover was good. I think what would be good is that you really promoted the downstairs businesses and stuff because that's a good idea because that's grab and go for kids who um, have got to run to class or run home or catch the bus. That's a nice way of capturing that business. Thank you. Um, a couple quick things. So when you were talking about emails to students and the, the email system that the school has, do you know who oversees that program and is it, can they do an email blast to every student that's in the school? Do they do things like that? Is there an administrator? I don't know if there is an administrator, administrator and um, we receive all the time multiple emails every day. I think that you can talk with administration like um, the Bergen Community College and I think that you will see any problem. So maybe this is counter promotion every week that will be excellent to bring people and students and professors. Okay, great. Um, I mean, I know everyone's pushing the, the games and the consoles and the TVs and the table games. I agree with it. I like it. I think it's a great idea. Does anyone know if the school has any resources? I mean, I, I don't know what my company's spending is like at the moment. I, I'd have to look into it, but does the school have resources that I could look into? Would they be able to offer up any? I know previously there have been um, video games held downstairs in the student center by the um, pizzeria and the Starbucks. Um, I believe that was maybe a month ago, and they I had basically right. like, um, were they switches or were they like an actual like console? I think it was console. They had two consoles already, and it was um, two screens set up, or like um, almost like projector screens like this one, that they yeah. pulled down, and they projected the game um, from the console for students to come and play, and it was almost like a competition uh, where you can have four players at a time on one game, and then uh, four play players at a time on another game, so you're getting eight students at a time, and it brought a lot of attention, and also downstairs they did um, project the World Cup when that was going on to get people to kind of stay, hang out, and if people are trying to watch the game in between classes. So they do have, uh, I believe, previously existing consoles already. Most of the people prefer the halal food, but uh, I'm pretty sure uh, we can find a reliable information on student international student center about any ethnicity and every nationality and how many students they have in there. Yeah. Yo, I, I love the halal idea. I ran the halal food program at Springbrook University, and I want to bring something like that here. I'm just, I'm still trying to get my feet wet and I'm trying to figure things out. Plus, we all know like a very popular food chain of halal is like juicy platters. Everybody loves juicy platters, whether you are of Middle Eastern descent or not. So, like, halal is a very popular food choice for people, and that's why uh, a lot of people, based on our survey, when we asked them, our initial question was, which food type would you prefer? 90% um, uh, of the people selected um, halal food over any other food. Yeah, I mean, I love it. That concept was the smallest concept that Stony Brook, when I left, it was the most popular concept. Yeah. So I definitely want to bring it here. I'm just trying to see how we're going to even though the students were not from Turkey, they chose this concept because they really like it. Sure. I also want to add up uh, uh, our demographics data is a little off to date, but uh, when I was registering, I registered this semester, uh, and when I was registering, I don't know if you know, but there is a uh, Miss Mine in International Center. She told me that uh, there has been uh, some Turkish. Uh, people were uh, increasing in our school, and she told me that there's around 9,000. 
thousand thirty students in our school. Wow. Great. Great. Great job. Thank you very much, you too. So, finally, lastly, uh, I'm going to introduce T3. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. I really appreciate seeing so many new faces here to come see our presentation tonight. My name is Fadi Pushka. I am the Vice President of Team 3. And I have to my right here is Bart. He is our team leader of Team 3. And from the left, we have Geraldi, we have Johanna, um, Gabriel, uh, Diana behind Gabriel, Yohara, and Kevin. They are our team members, and they will be helping uh, show our presentation for tonight. So to kick off our presentation, I'd like to call up uh, Johanna and Gabriel to uh, get things going. Hi, uh, student reach out. How can we reach out to students in the campus? So the, in, the greatest way to reach out to students is by using the social media platform. So the social media platform is a great way Create business, to create business awareness in the college and can also be a great way to reach out a large audience and potential customers. So, before I proceed, I would like to ask you a question, audience. Uh, how many of us uses a uh, so social media platform? How many of us? Uh, you don't use? Okay. Yeah, wow, nice. So, this shows that. This shows that most of the in college students use a social media platform. So uh, we just have like uh, some two ladies back there that doesn't participate on social media platform. So that's why me and Johanna decided to team up and um, make some social media accounts. Like we made a TikTok account that will show some menu items and provide uh, cooking tutorials so you can see what's in the food or maybe you want to go make it at home you know just do whatever you want to do with it and also the instagram account will support live updates on menus and specials that we will have during the day which could also be a great uh tool to use like using the stories like the story system in on these uh social medias since you can post some you can post something and it stays up for 24 hours so for example if your hours are going to be 8 a.m to 8 p.m you can post your menu at 7 to 7.30, and then they'll be 7, 7 to 7.30 a.m., and then they'll be off there by 7 to 7.30 by the next day, so you can post your next menu if you're gonna change it up. Now I'm gonna, oh, excuse me, give me my book, I'm reading Spanish. Now I'm gonna read in Spanish. Um, uh, una nueva cuenta de TikTok para mostrar elementos del menú y por proporcionar tutoriales de cocinar. Um, Y nueva cuenta de Instagram para admitir actualizaciones en vivo sobre menús y especiales. So, um, what, what about some, some research that you looked up? Like, you let me know. Oh, research. Yeah. The research also shows that, the research also shows that 28% 20, of students spend more than, uh, spend more than two hours on social media. And it also shows that 27% of students spend two to four hours on social media. And it also shows that 11% uh, spend eight and more on social media. So that shows that our social media platform is a great tool to promote a business. Okay, so that's why we wanted to implement a Snapchat, Snapchat account that will like be like kind of our hub letting you know what's going on in different social medias and will provide the daily news. While on our Facebook page, we would like to be like more um, like student student focused. Like we want people to tell us what they want, what they want to vote. We want us to implement and improve in the cafeteria. Like we'll have polls and like blogs about all that. And now I'm gonna say that in Spanish. Um, 
una nueva cuenta de Snapchat para el Bifil, centros sociales basados en la ubicación y noticias diarias. Um, nueva cuenta de Facebook para respal respal respaldar blogs y brindar comentarios a de estudiantes sobre cam cambios en los cafés. Now tell me, um, what about the other 6%? What are we going to do? Oh, the 6%? Yeah. Uh, okay. As a good management, you know, 94% uh, is good. It's cool, right? It's good. But as a good management, you, you love to like uh, consider everybody. You love to like, you know, work with everybody. And you would love to see everyone connected to you. We need 100%. So the six percent, like the lady down there and the other six are right there that doesn't use social media platform. So how can we reach out to them? They don't know what is going on on the social media platform. So um, that is why me and my team members we sit down and discuss and finalize and and and, and brought out the uh, the posters. And I think poster posters are. Posters, flyers, and banners are one of the greatest tools again to promote business in, in the college for people like them. So, what we need uh, is a sign located at the campus. campus. Yeah. campus. Yeah. So, secondly, we will also need a banner, a banner downstairs at the pizzeria and also at the uh, at the staff. Box. So the reason why we need banner down there because the student center is there, is located there, and the entrance is also located there. So that means since our sister there, she doesn't use social media, and whenever she comes to college, she has to follow like the, the entrance. So she can see the banner, or if she or or if someone doesn't like the food at the pizzeria. If someone doesn't like the food at the pizzeria, they are, they are supposed to be a different menu right there. And the most important thing we need down there is the location. And as you can see, the location is both. You can see the location, second floor, see wings. And I'm just going to finish it up in Spanish. So, nuevos letreros ubicados alrededor del campus para anunciar el café a los estudiantes y brindar instrucciones sobre dónde encontrarlo. Awesome, very good. Thank you, Johanna and Gabriel. You guys are great. So, our next slide here will be our promotional commercial for the cafe. The overall theme behind this commercial was was to represent a to bring a film for everyone that can that we can use to to play around the campus at different times. We have a lot of TVs around campus. So this, you know, this uh, film right here will highlight a lot of that. I'll do less talking and let the video do it. And welcome to Bergen Community College located in Paranus, New Jersey. Here at Bergen, the campus is full of rich diversity and colorful cultures from students and staff of all backgrounds. And with a campus of over 10,000 students, the options for dining in are endless. Follow us as we show you just how Bergen Community College feasts in style. As we make our way into the student center, we are greeted by Cremont Pizza and their wonderful collection of pies made fresh every day. Once you have your slice, you can go right around the corner to Starbucks Coffee, where you can grab a drink and enjoy your meal in our beautiful dining area. And if pizza is in your preference, that's no problem. Simply follow the signs along campus to locate our beautiful cafe on the second floor of the ceiling. And once you've arrived, you'll be greeted by the entrance to the dining room, as well as our wonderful cafe. As soon as we enter, we are instantly greeted by our new online ordering tablets. And after a few more steps, we have finally made it to our marvelous and beautiful cafe. Aquí vas a encontrar toneladas de variedades, especialmente de nuestro bar de ensaladas, donde las posibilidades son infinitas. Si tienes un diente dulce, puedes visitar nuestra panadería, que está llena de deliciosos postres, que puede endulzar cualquier humor. O nuestra estación de yogur, donde puedes agarrar y irte sin cansar de clases. Si tienes tiempo, puedes ver nuestro Farm to Market o World Market, donde los platos son diversos. 
En Martin, ¿puedes mantenerlo simple con una buena hamburguesa o papas fritas? O ver qué están cocinando, como este hermoso plato de pescado y papas fritas. Cuando ya hayas escogido, anda a la estación del sabor, donde puedes poner el, la salsa picante que tú quieras. Para enfriar las cosas, nuestra gran variedad de bebidas sanas son una buena opción. No te olvides el billete antes de pagar. Y ahora estás en, en camino a disfrutar el plato asombroso aquí en el hermoso comedor de Bering Community College. You guys all enjoyed that little film that I prepared for you guys. So the general premise behind it was it took me essentially a semester and a half to realize that we did have a cafe with how minute the branding was around the campus. That's why you know we wanted to implement banners, signs, and posters all around to you know bring it to people's minds because it took me you know that much time. So now I'd like to call up Diana and she will continue the presentation. So we think music helps to create a more complete a more welcoming environment for the students. So we want to play a, a calm and relaxing music for them. And we want to put more speakers and more music to create a positive health and physical benefit for the students. Yo soy estudiante internacional, entonces creo que también se han dado cuenta que hay muchas culturas aquí, por eso Queremos añadir a la, al menú que tenemos de diferentes culturas, queremos decorar la cafetería con diferentes eh, banderas de los países de cada, de cada estudiante y cada mes nos vamos a enfocar en decorar la cafetería con imágenes de sus países o con su historia. Eh, creemos que eh, el actual horario que tiene la cafetería eh, se cierra hasta las 3 de la tarde, no es beneficioso para los estudiantes que están por la noche o los que tienen que salir rápido. Por eso creemos que el nuevo horario hasta las 8 eh, sería más conveniente. Eh, sabemos que puede ser un desperdicio de comida o tener mucho personal puede ser un gran gasto, por eso Queremos mantener el mínimo de staff para poder atender a, poca, a pocas personas. And we think, we, we think communication is important for the for people. So uh, we want to create a welcoming environment. Uh, as you can see, we have round tables and large tables and also small ones. Uh, and you can come here. Uh, want to stay alone or if you want to if you was if you want to stay with your group you have different options and you can have a good time here. All right and now we have the rebranding of our existing outlets. We found that you know if you look around Bergen Community College you rarely see any sort of mascot or any sort of patriotism towards towards our mascot. So for Primo Pizza, we decided we wanted to rename it El Bistro Bulldog. We think it's more catchy, and we want to incorporate, of course, as you see, the Bulldog, which is our our main logo that will be shared across all the various different outlets. It'll be as a, a way so we can just quickly identify, you know, that this is Bergen. And honestly, with Farm to Fryer, that is a very catchy name. We were trying to think, you know, how can we change it, but we we liked it, so we decided to keep that. Farm to Fryer is is good, and uh, we'll go to the slide and. Now we have Malt and Main. We want to change Malt and Main to the Dog House because you know you can get amazing hamburgers and, and uh, hot dogs there. And for our world market, we have Bulldogs walk around the world. You can see our logo is easily transferable through different types of branding. Should you should you choose? And then lastly, we have the Salad Bar and the Coffee Station. You know we decided that we will call the Salad Bar the Bulldog Bolts. Again, you know we want to keep it catchy and something that you can easily remember. And same as well for the Bergen Barista. We think that one, you know, that one is our favorite, I think. Our, our best our best name. So next we'll have our, our menu team, Yohara, Kevin, and Ralph come up. And uh, we'll first we'll start off with Yohara and then or Kevin, sorry, to come up and uh, begin. Hello everyone, we'll be presenting in my native language, Spanish first. Um Buenas noches. Uh, 
Yo pensaba, me fui curioso, pensaba que ellos me campaña por en este yo de Perú, porque primeramente no hicimos, nuestro no era, eh, hicimos un análisis demográfico un poquito menos práctico como el de ustedes, como el trabajo de ustedes. Eh, nosotros hicimos un trabajo eh, más bien de preguntarle a nuestros amigos y compañeros eh, cuál era, eh, cuál era eh, la cuáles eran las, eh, cómo ellos quisieran ver o quisieran ver nuevo o implementar nuevo en la cafetería eh, o en el menú. Nosotros, eh, vi, eh, nosotros eh, aceptamos sus opciones y pusimos eh, eh, pez, eh, huevo, huevo servido, eh, un tazón de acai, todo el mundo conoce que es un tazón de acai, eh, y se basó en combos, combos de, um, de ustedes ir, y bueno, se basó en combo en que ustedes eh, no solo comprar una cosa, sino también eh, comprar una cosa eh, por eh, un combo de algo, como una oferta. Es como eh, usted agarrar eh, un café con dos croissants, no solamente, no solamente comprar una sola cosa, sino eh, al precio de uno, un combo de un café y dos croissants. Por ejemplo, un té, que mayormente muchos de nuestros amigos compran té. Eh, puede, se puede complementar con algo de la sección de fruta, o sea, viene incluido eh, también un café o, o una dona puede también ser al precio de, un solo, de una sola mercancía. También eh, una hamburguesa o un plato de pizza más una soda, eso viene completamente roto también por, el, por el, la compra de un solo. Eh, aquí están los combos también, los combos eh, toma y lleva, porque como saben, nuestro horario, el horario de los estudiantes es eh, un poco, no mucha gente se queda en la cafetería, tienen el, el, el lujo de quedarse en la cafetería y almorzar, así que eh, nosotros implementamos un toma y, y ve, con una garra y lleva, de lo mismo, que es especial vegano, que está bien para cuatro o más personas, y con el smooth pueden haber, hay un combo de café para cuatro personas, más cuatro croissants, eh, eh, cuatro smoothies con proteína y un tazón de, y un tazón de, de acai. El smoothie y todo lo, que se, todo lo que ustedes quieran de la sesión de yogur, gratis, incluido. Eh, cuatro, eh, cuatro tazas de té también, para, incluido para... Eh, más personas también y cualquier cosa que eh, esté incluida en cualquier cosa de la sección de frutas. Ok, uh, my team and I, we think in that we, don't, we, we went less practical, we do not go and did analysis, uh, don't people, people, we just ask our peers, ask our friends what they want or need, what they would like to see uh, personally. Uh, so uh, we think, or team and I, think of uh, combos because they always, uh, people in the cafeteria, they always, um, as a, a large group or just a group of people, it can be like a group of two or four people. So we just implement our breakfast as a combos, um, a combos of four and a combos of like uh, coffee and two croissants as the amount of one just mentioned it. Uh, like a test of like eggs, it can be just alone. But a high bowl is kind of big, it's like a large a portion, so it would be like a bowl. But a uh, coffee plus two croissants, it would be like one at the amount of, uh, it would be coffee and two croissants at the amount of one. Uh, tea and anything for the cross section too, like uh, again, uh, one at yeah, the amount of one. A coffee of donuts, a burger and color pizza, and anything from the, so from, uh, from the soda, for the soda section. And the breakfast, again, if we implement a grab and go, and we did it as a, like a group, a group, uh, yeah, for a, a mug of four or five persons, and we implement uh, a special thing of uh, pesto bake eggs, like for a mug of people, uh, a special bacon, and anything for the solar station, plus four amount of people, I don't know, and a smoothie with protein, with a cowboy, I, oh, again, so plus, um, and a coffee, and for croissants, 
mostly everything for the jogger section and feet and everywhere from the uh, foot section again. It is a grab and go. It is now it's right now it is kind of luxury to be in the cafeteria and eat. So we implement that for people that doesn't have time and they want to grab, go work and eat anyone anyone else. Uh, these are some menu ideas and options for lunch. As a Spanish uh, student, I would love to see um, a dish from my country, or I would love to try a dish from a different country. Uh, as you can see, uh, we added for menu, we added a dish from Mexico, like taco, bandeja uh, paisa from Colombia, yacmiacho uh, from Ecuador, and these are some ingredients that are that we would use for each one of these uh, dishes. Uh, as you can see, the ingredients are uh, very common, and it can make um, it can make a really delicious dish and and diverse and a diverse diverse dish. Uh, and now I would say in Spanish. Estos son algunos. Um, ideas para el almuerzo como yo soy uh, un estudiante hispano me encantaría ver algún plato de mi país natal o me gustaría probar algún plato de, de un país diferente como pueden ver aquí lo que pusimos en el menú uh, tenemos tacos de México tenemos países de Colombia de Venezuela uh, también de otros países y estos son los ingredientes que usaríamos como pueden ver son ingredientes muy comunes que pueden hacer unos platos muy deliciosos y muy diversos and uh, um, a very community college is a very diverse college so having that in mind uh, we came up with this menu from all like different countries and stuff. So as a student myself, I know that if something that can satisfy every student is to have a good time with your friends and to eat some food, but while doing this, you, you don't have to pay too much. It's not too expensive. So we came with the idea to add some dishes that would be served for people, for groups of people between four and six persons. We got the super nacho flavor, we got buffalo wings, we got also diners, four plus combos, such as oven bacon, giant shell stuff with tomato and parmesan cheese, plus anything from the juice section. We got also a big order of tacos, plus anything from the juice section. You can see we got some other things too. We also, as you can see, we got some pictures of our, of our foods. But the most important thing you can see are the prices. If you do the calculation that those prices are gonna be gonna be shared between four to six people, that's gonna be a nice price for a good meal, enjoying good time. So all idea of this is to have some good time, to enjoy with your friends and while the most important is that this is something for you. So now I would like to say this in my own language which is which is Uben. Si student Yambe and this uh Jamish to show you how the meat stand, the program for shim, no not mere, then we can not talk about shim. For an amount of day, the airdom makes it the the most important. This a jail area. This time the supernatural player on buffalo wings. You can see the the menu came in during the third note. The jail man teach man the dog young. This guy is not much so much strength. This time this guy lear. The most colorful food comes from Indonesia too. For the no cap, no to the most powerful show. Thank you. Eh, 
nosotros hicimos esto basado en un blog cultural por semana. Eh, por ejemplo, en México, en México el, el martes de tacos, de pizza y un extracto, un extra topping por encima, lo que, lo que ustedes quieran. Eh, tailandés, un plato mango, con, mango con, eh, con arroz, eh, anglo y indio, eh, basmati con arroz y especias y coco, dominicano, la bandera, eh, baclava, un, un, es un, uh, esto es un es de Albania, Venezuela pequeño, que aquí está la foto de los pequeños, y Perú, y de Perú, ceviche. Aquí también tenemos, eh, implementamos el 5 de mayo, San Patrick, eh, eh, eh, Thanksgiving, eh, Navidad, eh, Día de Gracias, porque queremos una cafetería que sea diverso, que celebre, pues que nosotros pues, celebremos, que haga, que sea, que sea más interesante, queremos ver algo diferente, queremos que celebre cosas que nosotros celebremos, celebramos, queremos, eh, Queremos, eh, sí, que la cafetería también se anima a celebrar cosas que nosotros celebramos. Haga cosas que, que no sea tan... No, no es. Ok, um, we base uh, this multicultural holiday specials again, because uh, we were less practical to ask people to turn our arms. So we came up with this multicultural theme, just one plate per week. Uh, Mexico has a sesay, uh, pizza, if it was pizza of the week, uh, that week it will be extra topping of your special topic of your choice. Uh, Thailand, mango with rice, and go India, see basmati, bas basmati with rice and whole spices and condiments. The Dominican, la batera, the, the black, uh, baklava, pasu surf, la peña, Venezuela, pequeños, as the photo is the uh, Peruvian speech and these are uh, holiday specials too. They are two with uh, the combos that I uh, I, I say it's later. Uh, Cinco de Mayo is like five of May. Uh, St. Patrick's Easter, the giving, the Christmas, all with uh, come with combos. Combos that are for four people or six people or more. And we came out of that are just like those, so we want to implement more of that. We want just a cafeteria that celebrates things that we celebrate and uh, uh, are based on the diversity of the community college, of the, the community college. Um, thank you. So, hello, this is Vitamin Fisk. Vitamin from Fisk. I'm Barbara I am the team leader of Group 3. I am here to present about the what the program and for mobile app opportunities for the uh, college cafeteria. Um, for our mobile app opportunities, our plan is to use a service called Bento Box, in which provide mobile ordering, loyalty programs, gift cards, and even search engine options optimization in case somebody is going, for example, to look up for a community college and they want to register classes. Then, bam, you can get a recommendation in which gives introductions to the cafeteria. Um, and with, to, do the, uh, to do that, you can bring out your own brand, you can bring out the brand of the cafeteria, because everybody knows the more exposure you have of your brand, aka the cafeteria, the more opportunities you have to have potential new customers. So, one of the things that I'm about to provide is our loyalty program. Our, you can choose whatever loyalty program you'd like, and our thoughts uh, and our idea was to implement something similar that the McDonald's ordering app does, and which is a point system. So our local program would, will be a program where every purchase will grant a certain amount of points, and we will build on and we'll build on the account of the customer. And in turn of that, over time, the customer will be able to use points to redeem rewards such as free meals or free coffee. So, for example, you're going around. Uh, spending a certain amount of money on certain menu items like just a coffee, you get X amount of points, you get X amount of points, you can use those over time to get as small as something as small as just a side of fries, or you can get save your saving points all the way and get yourself a whole meal like from the World Market. And 
for our other local programs, we had an idea for all the students that in case they would have a birthday on the day of college, they can go ahead and sign up for a local program as well. And when they register their birthday, um, they're able to walk in the cafeteria and they get a free um, item. And from what they get as well is a free Polaroid picture in which will be taken and we post it on the wall in the cafeteria. And obviously, you will also be able to have vegan gluten-free options. Um, some of our ideas for the holidays was, for example, even for Halloween, we could have an Instagram contest in which we would be using our social media pages, in which you, well, what we'd have to do is obviously follow Burger Foods Cafe, take a photo or video during the event, and upload it uh, using uh, our uh, listed hashtag, and you would be able to vote using Instagram polls. And lastly, what we have now is the uh, accumulated expenses that we have for all the changes that we made. Starting off with our, our Polaroid camera, that starts off at around 100 bucks, and then for 16 images, approximately $20. And now the price monthly will vary, but we estimated around approximately 60 or so, depending, you know, initially, and then um, for our tables, if we were thinking to add eight of those round tables, and then the price per single unit was 2,000, so the total would be 16. The Pento box subscription, the upfront cost for that was $1,000, and our monthly cost to maintain the, the website is uh, $345. And speakers as well, we wanted to add speakers for our music to uh, get a more lively and great experience at the cafe. So six of those at $100 is 600 there. And, um, and also we have our ideas for our social media management, in which obviously a total sum cost is not applicable, but it would be costing to run all of our social media pages of around $750 per month. And also for our decoration, because obviously for the season you can change decorations within the cafeteria, uh, it would be first an uh, initial cost of $120 and then a monthly cost of $50. And then our total cost for a upfront cost would be a total of $17,840. And for our monthly costs would be a charge of $1,205. And uh, after that, that now concludes our presentation. And we want to once again thank everyone else for taking the time to come out tonight to uh, see, our, see our team present. And uh, I'd like to open up the room now for any potential questions before we move uh, over to uh, our president and vice president. Thank you. Uh, I was able to source a friend of mine who is, uh, has extensive amount of experience and is an industrial designer, graphic design. You give him a pencil and he can make magic with it. So as you saw those previous logos, they, they, uh, <clears throat> we got very creative with them. And uh, our team is to credit for uh, the logos. We all work together and uh, came up with the different names for our different outlets. I also like the idea of the birthday program as well because that was a very nice touch for students mm -hmm. to be able to go up and I like the idea of the Polaroid and picture that you get your birthday. You go up for your birthday and you can have your picture put up there for your birthday. That's actually a nice touch for somebody who might have their birthday forgotten by the family. Yes, and one and one other um, keynote to mention is that we were also thinking to have a cardboard cutout of a mascot that we can get, you know, life size so that we can, you know, Get the, get the Polaroid looking a little more exciting, you know? And then, of course, with the Polaroid wall, it'll also create a more home style and welcoming feeling. You're not just walking into brick and mortar, which is currently the, the, um, the decorations around the uh, cafe, so. Uh, so the first question I have is, I know you had an area where you were extending hours till 8 p.m. My only question is, and I'm not, I, we were gonna do it originally and we were told that there was no need. Is there a need? I don't I, know how many students there are on campus that night, and if there is, I'll push it again. It, it was basically the campus that told us no, but I didn't revisit it. I believe so, personally. They're, you know, the cafe closing now at three and then co completely closing at, I believe, five. The, um, there is a demand because, you know, classes that run until nine o'clock, you know, you're, you're limited in terms of, you know, grabbing something to eat beforehand and we believe that should the hours be extended throughout the day you can now orient class periods where you can integrate a break 
to allow students to go and eat for approximately 20 to 30 minutes for the longer classes that run for three to four hours, which that's a huge benefit. You know, there are times, me personally, where, you know, I, I, I walk into a classroom like already hungry and uh, like the, I have time to go to the cafe, but it's closed, so. So would you, um, classes end at 8 p.m.? No. Yes, most classes end at 8, uh, as well as 9. I mean, to my knowledge, 9.05 is the longest class, uh, latest class to run. Okay, all right, I can revisit it. Um, I agree with Justin on the logo, that the logo was great. I thought the commercial was good, it was presented really well. Um, and just, I'm trying to get a handle on it. It's, it says table dishes, so that's like a shared dish. Yes, that's that's assuming it's like you have a group of friends and no one can figure out what they want. Everyone can chip in together and get a dish that can be served for four to six people. Just a large platter if everyone's just, you know, not, not necessarily craving an entire platter to themselves, but something to just pick out with a bunch of friends while you're, you know, having a study session in the cafe. So that was our that was our thinking behind that. Cool idea, I like that. Um, and I like the weekly cultural team. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks again for uh, everyone for coming out and appreciate that.
translate that in Spanish for us. Están todos invitados a nuestra fiesta de despedida que tendrá lugar en Menon Racing and Entertainment. Hemos reservado nuestra cena en Trotters, the owner's club, ubicado dentro de Meadowlands Entertainment. La fiesta consiste de un bar abierto, una comida de cinco platos y entretenimiento presentado por Pops DJs. El costo total de la fiesta es de $8,391. Aquí encontraron lo que nos ha regalado la oficina central de New Brunswick. Es un vaso Yeti Rambler Tumbler. Eh, se conoce que es el mejor copa de acero más duradero en el país. En el lado izquierdo de la pantalla pueden ver que, cómo se ve la taza con el nombre de la empresa en frente y el logotipo de la empresa en la parte posterior. El precio total de 35 vasos y aris es $1,605 dólares con 11 centavos. Okay, so all being said and done, again, for the fact that we, our satellite office is only set up for uh, three months. Our overall expense for that period of time, the office expenses, as mentioned earlier, were $43,555. Our overall payroll, not including the bonuses, would be $108,000. The wrap-up party is $8,391. The corporate gift total was $16,0511 for a total cost of $161,551.11 for three months that we were here. Aside from that, I want to thank everybody for being here. I think all the three teams did a wonderful job and much appreciated for you being here. Does anybody have any questions for myself, for Olga, anything we can help? Well, just want to let you know that <clears throat> the budget for CEO, Sunlight President, and Sunlight Senior Vice President of Operations, that budget comes out of New Brunswick, so you are not part of the satellite budget because you're permanent employees. Like everybody else, was hired as a satellite, so the budget would actually be a little bit less. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? No, all right. So in the back, uh, Professor Luttrell was kind enough to bring in some refreshments and snacks for us, which we can now shortly. Okay, so just to finish up everybody, I want to thank everybody for their hard work and to our client. What do you think? Good ideas. Uh, great ideas. I'll, I'll, um, I'll confer with you and go through all my thoughts and everything else, but I thought everybody did a really, really great job. All the um, presentations, the videos, um, the ideas, it's a tough choice because they were all really, really good. So I'll have to, I'll have to run through my notes and see where we're at. Well, I hope that the teams gave you some inspiration and then you'll let me know which team you want to hire. I absolutely will. Okay, and everybody, Thank you very much for the evening. Excellent job, everybody on the team. Corporate will be very happy. And corporate would now like to get a group shot for headquarters in New Brunswick. And thank you everybody for attending. Have a good evening. Okay, so everybody come on up. We're gonna take a quick group shot. I want president and vice president on my side. And then I want vice presidents and your teams behind you off to the edge, and I need somebody. Jack, you want to take a picture for us? Sure. If anybody wants to take a picture. Okay, so what I want is, okay. Okay, I want Angela to be right here next to me. Okay, we've got four of these more right here, with your team behind you. Tall people in the back, okay, Kadali right here, and, okay, Yuri is here, Dimitri, where are you? Okay, Dimitri, um, I, need, I need you over here to get you closer to the other vice president, so, okay. Okay, everybody, and hold it, please. Can you hear everybody? Can, we, can we move that? Yes. It's kind of killing my shot. <laughs>